So I've been working on a children's book for the past few years, and unlike a traditional children's book that's done uh, with illustrations, this uh, story takes place in a, a world of handmade uh, puppets and sets. Each environment is created by a team of artists, then we uh, photograph uh, that environment, and the final uh, story will be comprised of uh, these photographed images. So this is the first video in a series of videos that really gets into how these uh, sets are constructed. I am about three days into building this set, uh, and I thought this would be a good point to stop and talk a little bit about uh, the processes and materials that I'm using to get to this point. I would call this a medium-sized set. Um, it will probably be about six feet wide, uh, 10 feet deep, and about four feet tall. It will have a ground plane here. Uh, there's two puppets in the shot, one that's sitting right in front of a tree here, and then one that is on a ladder right here. All of the images for this project start out as a drawing. First thing I do is enlarge the image to the scale that I want to build. The scale of every scene is pretty much dictated by the puppets. So I take this image and I project it onto a wall and size it according to the puppets. And then I draw it to scale on a piece of foam core and then I have this drawing as a reference. So a little disclaimer here, uh, I do not work for a, a company that does this and I definitely wouldn't call myself a professional. This is all stuff that I just kind of do as a hobby uh, and really I just kind of make it up as I go along. Whenever I'm building a set I really like to have a solid base. Um, so most of the time everything will be built on top of a uh, piece of three quarter inch plywood. Um, this is definitely a good thickness. Uh, a lot of times things will be glued or screwed onto it, or the entire set will be screwed onto a table. Um, a lot of times the set will get bumped and has to be moved around a lot. So definitely take the time to uh, secure it onto some kind of base. At this stage, most of the materials I get, uh, I find at construction sites. Uh, I kind of do this little drive through circuit around all the business parks. I live in a very industrial area, so all of this stuff I really just pick up for free, including this plywood uh, and all of the foam that I'm using. It's a great way to uh, build stuff and not have to spend a lot of money. I also have a few of these folding tables that really come in handy. Um, these tables I use to screw the sets onto um, a lot of times I will drill directly into the table or I will drill holes into the table to secure different uh, props. Um, so a nice thick piece of plywood as well as some folding tables. That's really all I need to kind of support all of these structures. So for the ground planes of a lot of the sets, uh, there's a lot of different materials I use. Uh, a lot of wood, sometimes burlap, sometimes foam, sometimes chicken wire. Um, for this piece, I am using uh, the bead foam. These are the two inch sheets of bead foam. This stuff is really inexpensive. Um, you can get it at Home Depot, I think for about $20 a sheet. But uh, for the most part, I find this stuff all over the place at construction sites. Uh, I'm always amazed at how much foam gets thrown out. It's, you know, it's not the prettiest stuff, um, but for the most part, this stuff is all underneath everything, so you don't even see it. Uh, it's a great material to carve and shape. Uh, for this particular piece, that's gonna be this little set of kind of mountains and ground, uh, so the bead foam works great. So the first thing I try to do is create a ground plane that I know will uh, fit the entire scene. 
this ground plane here of the bead foam this will hold the tree uh, and the girl puppet as well as the stilts and the boy puppet there will be several uh, little mountains and trees in the back um, that will scale accordingly so if you look at this point on the left and this point on the right um, that is the left and the right side of the final frame uh, I know that the tree and the ladder and the puppets uh, will be somewhere in the middle of the set so if I pull that up it'll actually be over to the left a little bit if I pull that up uh, that's a good indication of where the uh, main pieces will be of the set you'll see that I took this big piece of foam core uh, and I just screwed it to a 2x4 there so I can slide that back and forth as I'm trying to figure out the uh, placement of everything. So you'll notice that there's a lot of extra room uh, to the left and to the right of those two lines as well as the front and the back. It's always nice to have a little bit of extra room when you're lining up the shot in front of the camera. Um, this just gives you the option of uh, zooming out a little bit if you decide that that's a better shot. You'll also see here that the front of the bottom plane is three feet while the back of the bottom plane is five feet. Having it uh, taper out like this takes into consideration um, the camera. Uh, depending on what lens you use, uh, you are going to see more of the background than you see of the foreground. So generally when I'm making a set, uh, I always have it uh, flare out a little bit. So the next thing is to mock up these two uh, main pieces of the set here. One is the girl in the tree uh, and the other is the boy on the stilts. When I'm starting out I like to keep everything super simple. Uh, you can see that the boy on the stilts here, the first little mock up is just uh, drawing on a piece of foam core with some sticks in the back uh, so I could stick this directly onto the uh, foam. And then once I make the decision that I'm happy with that, uh, I take it into another kind of simple construction here. Uh, and it's just kind of a mock-up of the ladder uh, with a printout and a cutout of the puppet um, on a block so I could kind of move it left and right and back and forth. For the girl in the tree figure, it also starts out very simple. Uh, I just start out with a drawing on a piece of cardstock glued to a box. This just allows me to uh, move it around on the table and get it into the position I want. And then once I'm happy with that, uh, I start to get a little bit more detail on that piece. I have the girl as a separate piece on a little block of wood on a piece of foam core. Uh, and the tree I have actually started to sculpt. So I'll be able to drop this in on the table as well. Most of these things are put together with just whatever I have lying around the studio. Um, random sticks, blocks of wood, uh, even the foam core. This is all stuff, you know, I find a ton of foam core uh, at the dumpsters around business parks. Um, this standard foam core, also this half inch foam core. So it's really nice to be able to uh, recycle stuff and not spend a lot of money at this stage. Um, the glue gun is my best friend for this. Uh, I do recommend using the uh, super strong industrial glue sticks. Um, that just makes everything a little bit more stable and secure. So at this point I'm happy enough with how everything looks that I am going to uh, put it in front of a camera and snap a few pictures. Uh, I am throwing on a, a few lights here. This is a 500 watt on top and a couple 500 daylight bulbs on the sides. 
And at this point, I'm not really obsessing about getting everything uh, perfectly placed. We still have to figure out what camera lens we're going to be shooting with. I'm assuming it'll be somewhere between a 50 millimeter and 100 millimeter lens. We rent a 5 DSL uh, camera when we shoot this. That's a camera that uh, has a super high resolution and it's known to be a really nice camera for print. I'm using this Canon Rebel here to snap these photos. Uh, this is a great all-around studio camera. I picked it up at Costco for a few hundred bucks. Uh, I do have to take into consideration that it is different than the camera we're renting. Um, but I have figured out that if I set the focal length uh, on this camera to about 45 millimeters, that's kind of a safe zone. Comparatively, it puts uh, the other camera somewhere in between a 50 millimeter and a 100 millimeter. So setting all the camera jargon aside, I'm really just trying to create an environment here that uh, has a little bit of wiggle room to accommodate for different cameras and lenses. So a big decision I have to make here concerning uh, the building of the set is the height of the camera. If I'm down here at the eye level of the girl, uh, you're going to see a lot less of the set as it goes back as opposed to uh, being up here uh, at the eye level of the boy. I'm pretty sure that the eye level will be somewhere right in here just above uh, the girl. Um, this is all stuff I'll have to take a look at after I snap some pictures uh, and take everything into Photoshop. So here's the final setup for this first round of photos. I have the camera back here, set up front, some basic lighting on the set. Uh, I spun this light around a little bit um, so I could darken the tree and the girl here uh, just so I could really pick up the silhouette in the final image. Um, little pieces of foam core to kind of hide stuff that you don't necessarily need to see. King size Sharpies are nice to have uh, on set. It's nice to be able to mark the set and really be able to see this in camera. Uh, C-stands are an invaluable piece of equipment for the studio. Uh, I have about a dozen of them in different sizes. Uh, that's kind of a, a medium sized one, tall one there, a uh, short one over there. Um, I would definitely recommend getting a few of them if you're going to do stuff like this. Uh, there are times when I am using all 12 of them just for uh, simple sets like this. So I took a few photos with the camera at different heights and this one was my favorite. This next picture here uh, has some black bars on the left and right. Those basically crop up to the back of the set. So this shows me just how much room I have on the left and the right. And when I lay the original drawing uh, on top of the photograph um, and line it up with the girl in the tree, uh, everything is pretty close. So at this point, I don't really see anything that's going to cause me uh, any major problems. So I can kind of move on to phase two and start to build out the set. Um, for the next video, uh, I'm going to do a little bit of work on the ground. I'm going to kind of uh, carve in some mountains here. Uh, I'm also going to work on finishing the tree up um, and really just kind of detailing all of the set pieces. Um, so stay tuned.